Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be honest with you, this has been a little bit clickbaity. Um, but I think I've done enough videos over my career of a YouTube video connoisseur to be able to get away with doing a little bit of clickbaity every now and again. Because I am afraid to say that, unfortunately, you will have to still pay for QuickBooks after this video. But my job is to show you how to make sure that the value of QuickBooks means that you are going to be having a reduced tax bill, which effectively means it's going to pay for itself. So we're going to look at what options we've got, how we can make it so that we've got enough expenses to make sure that you don't have to pay for QuickBooks anymore. Let's roll the VT and figure out exactly how this is going to work. Hello, my name is Anne Patrick. I am a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer with a fancy new logo, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, head of accounts here at Boffix, the digital disruptor of 2024 with a fancy new award, and your friendly podcaster who goes live each and every Monday morning for Ask the Accountant. Now, in today's video, we're going to be looking at how you can make sure that QuickBooks effectively pays for itself. First of all, let's look at the parameters of what we're looking at. So the idea I had for this particular video is that as you have in front of you here, I've got a standard QuickBooks license. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a 20,000 pound sale. And I'm gonna have a look and see what my income tax would currently look at. So if I had a 20,000 pound sale, I currently have a 1,486 pound income tax. So what can I do about it? How can I make QuickBooks work for me? Well, well, first of all, let's see what how much QuickBooks would be. And I'm going to go for using this page here, the most popular version, which is, which is Essentials. And I'm going to ignore the crazy discount that you have at the moment. And I'm going to go with what it would normally be. So annually, it'd be £33 plus a bit of VAT on top. So £39.60 per month times 12, it's going to be £475.20p, which basically means if I look at this one, I need to get below the £1,000 mark to be able to say that I've paid for it myself, or at least QuickBooks has paid for it for me. So that's my challenge. I need this income tax figure to be below £1,000. And that will then basically give me enough to have said that I could have paid for my QuickBooks Essentials license for that whole year. First tip would be don't forget to actually put the cost of QuickBooks itself into QuickBooks. Now, the easiest way by far to do this is to have connected it to the bank account. So whatever you're paying QuickBooks through, whatever bank it's going to be, make sure that's the one that's connected. Have a separate bank account. Make sure that it's connected from here. Um, once it's connected from there, it'll then automatically, every time you make that payment, go through. Now, I don't have that luxury of doing that in this particular instance. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add an expense. Let's pretend that it's come through the bank and I'm going to make sure that that expense for it is for basically subscriptions and for £475.20p. Now, that's not job done. Although I've spent £475.20p, that's not going to be what my tax bill is going to be. So if I was to go back into the preparation, have a look, where are we at now? So £1,390.96. I'm not quite there yet, but I've definitely started that process. I'm now only £390 of tax to go to let get to a point where I could say that that position that I'm in, QuickBooks itself has started to pay for itself. Right then, so... What else can I add? Well, the other thing is the whole point of having QuickBooks is to make sure you don't forget to add things, right? Don't forget to add expenses. And one of the best things you can do is use the app. Now, the app itself comes completely free with your subscription. So the fact you already own QuickBooks, you're paying for that essentials, means that you've already basically got access to this particular app. One of the best features about this is the snap receipt functionality. Now, if you connect your bank account, you're going to make sure that any transaction that happens in your bank is going to be recorded by QuickBooks. So any business expense will automatically go through. So most of the time you're going to record them. The problem is though, what about if you pay for something outside your bank account? So like this one here, I've got a Dishoom account here, a Dishoom expense. That means though, if I snap the receipt here, take a photo of it, um, 
Oh. Use that photo. Upload that document. You can add up to five at a time. It's going to be a surefire way of making sure those expenses get put in. Press got it. Let that extract it. And there we have it. We have traveling expenses. I'm not sure that's quite right. Let's call it entertainment and meals. It's automatically extracted the amount for me. It's automatically extracted the payment type. And all I need to do is add a payment account. So I'm going to say it was the card, the bank, save that one. And let's say I use my own personal credit card for this one. Um, I didn't have access to my bank there. So this would be a cost that normally I wouldn't have been able to remember to put in because I'd have forgotten about it, right? Yes, I could have keep the receipt and everything else, but what's the chance of me actually putting there? While I'm at the thing, I can put that straight in there, put it right in there as it needs to be. Create an expense from this receipt. And like I said, you can even add five snap receipts at the time. So it's going to give you loads of options to be able to in there. And that's going to help me bring that income tax figure down because these are expenses I tend to have forgotten about. But now I'm going to make sure that I bring this in. This is the sort of thing we love. Another one, if I go back to QuickBooks itself, is making sure that I use the journal entry functionality to add in some nice allowances I may be able to have. For example, in my use in my look i've looked at it and i am in, entitled to my use of home allowance which when i put it through the quickbooks i'm entitled to 312 pound per year so i'm going to have that as a new allowance i tend to put it in as a journal just because that's going to help me be able to put it through from there and I would then put it against my directors or my drawings account in this case I'm a sole trader and that's another expense start to come through. Now again using my mobile app I do have the functionality to go in and put mileage into QuickBooks. Now mileage is a huge huge area for you to be able to get some real good insights into bringing that into QuickBooks. The idea of the mobile app is you can set it to automatically record. So that every time you jump in your car, it's going to record you automatically using GPS that you've gone from A to B. And it's your job to go in, go into the QuickBooks app and say if that was a business transaction or personal transaction, and literally swipe left or right. You can even add rules that if you continually go to the same place, you can set it as a rule to automatically include it as a business or personal transaction. It's one of my favorite bits about the QuickBooks app automating that mileage for you, bringing that in there, just gonna help you be able to bring it in. And it's really good because the whole point of a mileage is that it's not just supposed to be for the fuel you use, but it's supposed to be the insurance, the cost of the car, the repairs and everything else. So you get quite a generous 45p per mile. And as you can imagine, that's gonna add up quite well. Imagine that in the end of the year, I've done 10,000 miles, well, the first 10,000 miles can be at the full 45p, actually goes down to 25p at that, but we're going to ignore that for now. That means I can put in that 45p at 10,000 miles, that's £4,500. Ka-ching! So make sure you're using QuickBooks to record that mileage for you. Soon adds up. If you're doing roughly 40 miles a day, remember that's there and back, then as long as it's within the rules of being able to claim for it, then you're going to be able to get up to that 10,000 miles mark pretty quickly, right? Because you do 10 fat, you do 40 times five times by 52 weeks in a year, suddenly you're going to be up there. So it's a real quick way of being able to make sure that you get the money that you, you get the relief for the costs that you've incurred. Now to make this more realistic, I'm not going to do quite 10,000 miles. Let's put in, I've done 2,500 miles be a little bit modest well, a little bit more modest about what i've been able to claim for so 2000 1000 to 2500 miles within a year put it through from there how's that going to affect my update now well let's have a quick look and we're really close now right 1103 pound and 56 p i've got 100 pound of tax to save so i've got that magic number of being able to say that i've been able to 
get QuickBooks for free. And remember, at this point, we're doing nothing extra. We're using QuickBooks as it's designed to be able to go in there and put the information in as needed. So what else can I do? Well, there's more receipts that I could take. There's more mileage I could do. But one thing that people forget to do and something that you can do really easily on here is to put in expenses that normally you don't have a receipt for. Like if you've got no receipt for it, how are you going to bring it in? Well, especially if you're VAT registered, you shouldn't be putting anything through the business and got a receipt. But there are certain circumstances where you just have to be able to show the best possible way you possibly can to prove that you're using a particular item, to prove it in. Now, the best thing you can think of is you've gone in and you're using your personal laptop for your business use. Now, you can't go bringing it in at its full market value when you paid for it and you can't really go back, especially if it's a couple of years old. What you can do is go through and find on the, on the market what you think that value is going to be now. What's the position that you'd be willing to pay for it on the second hand market? What's its true market value? <clears throat> and those assets, those startup costs we like to call them, well, you can bring them in. And what I would tend to do is actually take a photo of it, probably attach some sort of report or look at, you know, what, what the average price is going to be on Facebook Marketplace, eBay, something like that to back it up. But those pre-expenses are really, really powerful for you. And the fact that we can just use our phone, take a photo of it, means actually a little bit of legitimacy behind it. Now, as long as you don't take the Michael out of this one and you've been really kind of pragmatic about it and actually you've been prudent in the how much you include in, then this is a great way to do it. And the fact that you can do it directly from here makes it super simple. So I could say, right, I'm going to put this laptop and this iPad in. that I've got photos of there. They're my two transactions. I'm going to do that. I've done my market research. Actually, it's probably about a thousand pound worth of gear there. If I'm being prudent, probably worth more to be honest but let's say that you know if I was going to go and buy this second hand do it from there now yes um the receipt capture functionality on here is designed to be there that it'll extract the information for you but we can't do that from here but what we can do is we can just do this automatically manually so I can say right there's a thousand pound I'm going to do today's date I'm going to say category wise computer equipment and we're just going to get put it against the cash account for now. I'll save the receipt, save that there. Now I've put another transaction in there, which actually basically a photo of the asset. I would probably take a little bit more from that as well. I would, put, like I said, probably put some sort of a proof of how much and where I got my valuation of it from. But those pre expenses are so 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 important and that is how you can make sure that you are getting closer and closer to be able to make sure that you're making the most out of quickbooks because these expenses would normally be forgotten and normally be difficult to put in there if you're just doing it on excel spreadsheet or anything like that there's going to be a lot of rigmarole to get that in here i just took a photo put my valuation in run my report and there we have it with a few simple bits of just using the app that you've definitely already paid for I am already at the point where I'm able to be able to say that I have cleared my tax figure and I'm now paying less tax than before. And that difference, well, that difference has paid for that QuickBooks license in the first place. How did I achieve it again? Let's go through some of these options here. I had um, some other business expenses to include, which included the fact that, well, I've got to pay for QuickBooks myself, right? So that's one of the figures. I used my allowances, £312. I had a £1,000 worth of pre... And I was prudent in the way that I was claiming my travel expenses. There's actually more expenses in here, hasn't it? Because I don't think my uh, disume ones actually come through. Where's that gone? So let's say that actually this was in this particular tax year we're looking at. It's going to be even more uh, beneficial for us now when I go through. I have a look at our business expense. Now, remember that even on this, where we're looking at the income tax being adjusted, we've actually saved on the national insurance contribution as well. So we're absolutely quids in here. We definitely in this scenario paid for that back just by using the app for what it's designed for, bringing in those transactions. If I'm honest, not really having to do all that much more. So what do you think? Do you think this is going to be something that's worthwhile, especially if you're a VAT registered business Oh, the amount of input VAT that you can claim just for using QuickBooks that you would probably forget about is actually really, really powerful and definitely one of the things that our clients love to see when they're using QuickBooks online.
So there we have it. There is a way where you can make QuickBooks completely free of charge just by using it to be able to save on those taxes. They all mount up. Those expenses that you forget about, especially mileage, especially having those little expenses just here and there that you forget to put through, they really do add up. And what you should find is you save more than the subscription itself to be able to put that through. And you can see there just by a quick and easy, what, 10 minutes worth of putting some transactions in, I've already paid for my QuickBooks license. I've already put that one through and I'm already on my way to be able to make sure that I don't have to worry about it going forward. But that's it. That is a quick look. I remember that was for the essentials license. That's one of the more expensive ones out there. £33. Most people will be more than happy with that self-employed or even the brand new sole trader transaction. When realistically you're looking for around about £150 worth of savings to make it worth your while, which is definitely, definitely doable in a year. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Again, it was a bit of a clickbaity title, but I think I'm allowed to do one every now and again. But let me know in the comments. Do you think there's any other ways where you can save some lovely taxes to be able to pay towards your QuickBooks bill? Or do you think I've completely gone the wrong way and actually I've got this video completely wrong? Do let me know in the comment section below um, and let me know what you think about having this mentality that actually as long as you're gaining value out of subscription, as long as it's doing what it says on the tin, then it can actually pay for itself, which is what we're all about here. My name's been Adam Patrick. As always, this video has been an absolute pleasure to do for you. If you've got any other questions or anything else, let the comments below. If you want to know more about the world of QuickBooks, you're already in the right place. Make sure you all use that like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff, just to make sure we have everything in play ready for us to go out there and make sure that we put our best foot forward when it comes to doing QuickBooks Online. My name is Aaron Patrick. As always, this video has been a pleasure and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this new series. Hello and welcome to this video. 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 Alright, let's get it set. Let's do this. Oh yeah, you're right. Yes, I'm aware we go live every Monday. The next generation is about everyone else that missed it. Yeah. So, come All right, you've told us what you love about the industry, but what would you change about the industry? Where do I start? During that period of time, where did everyone turn to? Their account, right? Their advisors that would give a new, all the phenomenal work for small business.